thank you on behalf of the Alabama Newborn Screening Program. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to learn about newborn screening blood spot collection. Most babies appear healthy and they show no signs of illness right after birth, which is why newborn screening is so important. By collecting a quality specimen in a timely manner, you are saving the lives of our precious babies. Let's get started. This demonstration follows the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, or CLSI, guidelines. Please see the CLSI blood collection on filter paper for newborn screening for any updates. The heel stick with the direct application is the preferred method of collection. Before collecting the specimen, fill out the demographic section on the collection form accurately and completely. Be sure to write legibly. This information is crucial in getting the correct results and reporting any abnormal levels to the provider and the baby's family. Be careful not to touch the specimen collection area on the filter paper with your fingers. Gather all needed supplies, the specimen collection kit, approved heel warming device, sterile alcohol swab, avoid antibacterial or disinfectant products unless approved by the lab as this can affect the results. Powder-free gloves, sterile heel lancet, two millimeters or less. If infant is less than 1,700 grams or three pounds, 12 ounces, use less than 2.0 millimeters. Studies show that for some newborns, a puncturing depth beyond 2.0 millimeters might be excessive and may cause bone damage. Dry sterile gauze pads and aftercare supplies. Wash your hands. Put on powder-free gloves. Verify the correct patient. Select your puncture site. These are the safe areas for getting the blood specimen. Do not use a previous puncture site. Use the correct areas to avoid damage to the bone, nerves, or tendons. Warm the foot for at least three to five minutes. Using a heel warmer and collecting the specimen right after the infant is fed may increase blood flow. Position the infant's leg lower than the heart to increase blood flow. You could elevate the head of the bed. You may also swaddle the infant to help keep them secure. Disinfect the skin with alcohol. Vigorous rubbing during this step stimulates blood flow to the area. Allow the skin to thoroughly air dry so that residual alcohol evaporates and the antiseptic action of the alcohol is effective. Residual alcohol causes rapid hemolysis that may have an adverse effect on the results and may cause pain or stinging to the infant. Take your thumb and forefinger and form a C and circle the foot. This allows you to apply a little bit of pressure and then relax so the capillaries refill. To obtain sufficient blood flow, puncture the newborn's heel near the medial or lateral plantar surface with a retractable incision device or sterile lancet. The retractable incision device or heel lancet provides superior blood flow by making a standardized incision, 1.0 millimeter incision depth, 2.5 millimeter length. Position the puncture device to the predetermined target puncture site. Ensure that unnecessary pressure is not applied while triggering the puncture device. Gently wipe away the first drop of blood with a dry sterile gauze. This eliminates the risk of dilution by tissue fluids and any residual alcohol. Allow a new large drop of blood to form. Bring the filter paper to the large drop of blood and in one step, 
allow it to soak through to completely fill the pre-printed circle on the filter paper. Do not press or touch the filter paper against the puncture site on the heel. Blood should only be applied to one side of the filter paper segment of the specimen collection device card. Do not rotate the card from side to side during collection. Attempt to absorb the blood into the center of the target circle. The blood should be applied to one side of the card while watching to see that the target fills through on the other side. Do not layer drops as this may cause uneven saturation. Do not milk or squeeze the heel as this may cause hemolysis and a mixture of tissue fluids with the specimen. After the blood has been collected from the heel of the newborn, the foot should be elevated above the body and a sterile gauze pad gently pressed against the puncture site until the bleeding stops. Avoid touching or smearing the blood spots. Allow the blood specimen to air dry on a horizontally level, non-absorbent, open surface for at least three hours. At an ambient temperature of 18 to 25 degrees Celsius, high humidity may cause longer drying times. Do not place cards in front of air vents or other sources of moving air. Keep the protective flap open and away from the specimen during drying. Keep the specimen away from direct sunlight. The blood spots on the filter paper segment of the specimen collection device card should not be heated, stacked, or allowed to touch other surfaces during the drying process. Blood spots must be thoroughly dry before the flap is closed over spots. The dried blood specimens should be transported or mailed to the laboratory as soon as they are dry, with a minimum of three hours and no later than 24 hours after collection. Specimens shipped in a timely manner decrease the time to diagnose affected newborns and preserve the integrity of the blood spot and the biochemical analytes to be measured. It is not recommended that dry blood spot specimens be packaged in airtight, leak-proof sealed containers like plastic or foil bags because the lack of air exchange in the inner environment of a sealed container causes heat buildup and moisture accumulation. Heat, direct sunlight, humidity, and moisture are detrimental to the stability of the dried blood spot specimens. This demonstration has been brought to you by the Alabama Department of Public Health Newborn Screening Program. For more information, please visit our website at alabamapublichealth.gov newbornscreening newborn screening.